Bay City County Chesapeake Bay Board. The responsibility of this board is to carry out locally the Commonwealth policy to protect against and minimize pollution and deposition of sediment in wetlands, streams, and lakes in James City County, which are tributaries of the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, Ms. Parman, would you call the roll, please? Certainly. Mr. Bott? Here. Mr. Waltrip? Here. Mr. Gussman? Here. Mr. Hughes? Here. And Mr. Apperson? Here. First order of business are the minutes from the February 14th meeting. Are there any corrections, deletions, additions to the minutes? No, sir. The minutes stand approved. Um, our next order of business are public hearings, and our first case is CBE 18 058 47 Pleasant View Drive. Mr. Wilson. Good afternoon. Mr. Chair, members of the board, Mike Wilson here, Senior Watershed Planner for the Stormwater and Resource Protection. Here to present case CBE-18-058 at 4447 Pleasant View Drive. Ms. Rini Andrews has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of memorial patio and wall on property located at 4447 Pleasant View Drive within the Powhatan Village subdivision in the Powhatan Creek watershed. The property is further identified as James City County Real Estate Tax Map 374 The parcel was platted in 2002 prior to the revisions of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 2004. Existing condition of the property is a moderately sloped turf area from the rear of the house to the wood line. The area was cleared as part of the overall development plan for Powhatan Village. Near a community walking trail located at the wood line and within the existing turf area, Ms. Andrews wished to install approximate 200 square foot uh, memorial. The required mitigation for this amount of impervious cover would be one canopy tree and three shrubs. The mitigation plan includes one canopy tree, three understory trees, and one shrub, which does exceed the county requirements. <coughs> Staffs evaluated the application and, the, and this exception request and finds that it does meet the conditions outlined in the ordinance. <clears throat> a WQIA was submitted per the uh, sections 2311 and 2314 for the proposed land disturbing activity. The applicant has submitted the required information and the mitigation proposal again does include one canopy tree, three understory trees, and one shrub. Staffs reviewed the application and the request and has determined that the impacts associated with this proposal to be minor. Staff does recommend approval of the exception request with the following conditions incorporated into that approval. That the applicant obtain any other local, federal, state permits as required. That a surety of $250 be required in a form acceptable to the county attorney's office to guarantee the mitigation plantings. And that uh, this exception request shall become null and void if construction is not started uh, by March 14, 2019. And that any written request for extensions be submitted to our office no later than six weeks prior to that expiration date. Um, the applicant request is to construct a memorial uh, patio and wall within uh, Powhatan Village subdivision at 4447 Pleasant View Drive located here. The aerial photograph uh, shows the existing turf area that I described. Topography shows uh, constant slope from the rear of the house down to the wood line. Um, this slide shows some easements, storm easement, sanitary easement. There's also a community walking trail at the rear of the property along the wood line. And then the RPA as it affects this property in 2004. From the application, um, both memorial is in this location. And then the mitigation plan, one canopy tree, three understory trees and a shrub uh, in this location here. A 
couple site photographs describing the existing slope and from of the approximate location of the memorial looking back up. And the permit conditions as uh, recommended by staff that any other local uh, permits be obtained, local, federal, or state, uh, $250 surety to guarantee the mitigation of plantings, null and void if this project is not started one year from tonight's date, March 14, 2019, an extension request be submitted no later than six weeks prior to that expiration date. Be happy to answer any questions the board may have regarding this application. Any questions for the staff? Just so is the accessory structure outside of the 50 foot sewer RPA? No, sir. It's um, uh, it's going to be inside the landward or the seaward 50 foot RPA. Um, just up slope of the community walking trail which is approximately this location. Any other questions? At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing with the applicant. I'd like to come forward and address the board. Marini Andrews, and I live at the address we're speaking of, 447 Pleasant View Drive in the Villages of Calhoun. Questions? And any questions for the applicant? Um, thank you for coming out. You're welcome. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, okay. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak on this issue? At this time, I'll close the public hearing. Any discussion from the board? I, I'd like to uh, have some discussion about what the board's position is about development in the Seaward 50 foot of the RPA and the precedent that it sets in this neighborhood. Anybody else have any consideration on that issue? I think we, um, you know, usually we, we, we look at them individually. You know, I don't think we have a set policy, you know, re regarding um, it in general. You know, we, we just, we consider each case in the merits. We look at, you know, the neighborhood and, you know, the site. The, the timing of all of the it. county ordinance speak to development that deep into the resource protection area. The ordinance just uh, states that if the impacts are within the seaward 50, that it must come before the board. What I think we've done in the past is uh, first uh, was this something that uh, went into effect uh, before or after the lot was. Uh, Planted and second, uh, is the end result going to be better than what it was uh, before we did the permit? It looks to me with the mitigation that the end result will be better than what we have there now. We did vegetation taken up because there's nothing there. It's all, it's all back to cloud on it. Any other discussion from the board? Would someone like to make a motion? Chairman, I'd like to make a motion we adopt the resolution. CBE 18-058-447 Pleasant Valley Drive. Okay, we have a motion to adopt a resolution to grant the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board case CBE-18-058 <coughs> at 4447 Pleasant View Drive. Um, Ms. Parman, can you, would you call the roll please? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Bott? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. And Mr. Apperson? Yes. Okay, motion carries, the exception is granted. Thank you for coming out. Our next case is CBE-18-063. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Trevor Long, JC Watershed Planner, here to present CBE-18-063. 4069 South Riverside Drive. <clears throat> Ms. Carla Havens of Mid-Atlantic Resource Consulting has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception on behalf of uh, Mr. Vladimir Arana for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of a retaining wall and patio located at 4069 South Riverside Drive within the Chickahominy Havens subdivision and the Chickahominy River watershed. 
parcel was platted in 1961 prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990. The home at 4069 South Riverside Drive uh, was built in 1963 and Mr. Arana bought the property in October of 2017 for C to make unauthorized improvements to the property um, leading to an issue of uh, notice of violation which was overturned uh, at the February 14th, 2017 Chesapeake Bay Board meeting. One of the conditions of the appeal is the mitigation rates were to be doubled from standard practice. The required mitigation rate is one planting unit, which is now doubled to two planting units. The mitigation provided by the applicant is two planting units, plus the elimination of all turf grass in the rear yard and replanting of switchgrass or another native bunch grass to the removed vegetation. Uh, WQIA was submitted per sections 23-11 and 23-14 and um, staff has reviewed the application and exception request determining impacts associated with their proposal to be moderate for the proposed development. Staff does recommend approval for this exception request given the applicant obtain all other necessary federal, state, and local permits as required for the project. The surety of $2,000 is re required in a form acceptable to the county attorney's office to guarantee the mitigation plantings. That all development activities located in the special floods, flood hazard area shall comply with Article 6, Division 3 floodplain area regulations of the James City County Zoning Ordinance and receive all required approvals and permits prior to the commencement of such activities. And that this exception request approval shall become null and void if construction has not begun by March 14th, 2019, with written requests for an extension to the exception shall be submitted to the Stormwater Resource Protection Division no later than six weeks prior to the expiration date. Uh, above the vicinity map, the property outlined in light blue, 4069 South Riverside Drive, and an aerial photo of the property and the parcel. Um, here you can see the topography, slight, uh, slight slope towards the rear of the house, and the floodplain map showing, showing the house within the floodplain. Uh, here you can see that uh, the scope of the project would be within the resource protection area as, uh, as is the rest of the existing structure. Above the site plane, Chickahominy River to the north, uh, and the, the patio existing here, and retaining wall here. Proposed mitigation uh, plantings uh, here, here, and to the left. Pictures standing at the existing uh, boat launch, looking towards the house, the retaining wall here. Closer picture of the retaining wall and slope. Existing bulkhead here. And the patio and walkway picture here. Again, staff does recommend approval of this, um, of this exception, given that all other necessary lo local, state, and federal permits are required. A $2,000 surety is made acceptable to the county attorney's office. A mitigation plan um, meeting, require, or meeting requirements from granting the appeal uh, be carried out. Uh, and that this exception is null and void if not started by March 14, 2019, with written exceptions requested no later than six weeks prior to its expiration. Thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have at this time. Any questions for the staff? Okay. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the applicant like to uh, address the board? Yes. My name is Vladimir, and um, I'm the owner of the property, 469 South Riverside Drive, and we propose um, I see it on there. Uh, my intention is always to uh, improve, you know, and before I'm willing to improve 
he was lying. Anything else I can do for okay. for James City County, I'd be happy okay. to cooperate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions for the applicant? Okay, thank you. Would anyone else like to speak on this issue? This time I'll close the public hearing. Any discussion from the board? I think we discussed this fairly extensively last month. Yeah, I, I do too. And, uh, <coughs> and I think we were satisfied last month. Thank you for coming out. Okay, would someone like to make a motion? Yes, sir, I'll make a motion to grant the exception to uh, approve the project. Okay, we have a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board case CBE-18-063 at 4069 South Riverside Drive. Ms. Parman, will you call the roll, please? Yes. 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 Mr. Apperson. Yes. Okay, motion carries. The exception is granted. Thank you for coming out. Next case is CBE-18-070-6019 Tobiatha Lane. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Trevor Long, JC Watershed Planner, here to present CBE-18-070-6192 to Biatha Lane. Mr. Christopher Eckenfels has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of a shed located at 6019 to Biatha Lane in the Chickahominy Haven subdivision in the Chickahominy River watershed. Parcel was platted in 1967, prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990. There is an existing shed foundation that measures 16 by 16 feet at the location totaling 256 square feet of impervious cover. The proposed shed measures 12 by 20 feet for a total of 240 square feet of impervious cover. The existing um, impervious cover is in violation of the setbacks for the property. Um, in order to come into compliance with the setback requirements um, of JCC, Mr. Eckenfels is proposing to rebuild and move the shed. By moving the shed to come into compliance with the applicable zoning regulations, the shed will be moved closer to the water resource uh, protection area or within it. Um, this application does not qualify for an administrative approval through redevelopment criteria uh, because there is not a 20% reduction in impervious cover. Mr. Eckenfels is proposing to plant seven shrubs around the shed as mitigation for the impact. A WQIA was submitted and staff has reviewed the application and exception requested and has determined impacts associated with the proposal to be minor. Staff does recommend approval for this exception request um, and should the board wish to approve, the applicant must obtain all other necessary federal, state, and local permits a surety of $500 is required in a form acceptable to the county attorney's office to guarantee mitigation plantings. And all development activities located in the special flood hazard area shall comply with Article 6, Division 3 floodplain area regulations of the James City County Zoning Ordinance and receive all required approvals and permits prior to commencement of such activities. This exception request shall become null and void. Construction has not begun by March 14, 2019 with written requests for an extension um, to the exception must be submitted to the Stormwater Resource Protection Division no later than six weeks prior to the expiration date of this exception. Um, above in the subject, uh, in the vicinity map, you can see that the parcel located here within the Chickahominy River or Chickahominy Haven uh, subdivision. An aerial of the, the parcel shows the shed uh, location and proposal here. And the topography showing a very slight slope down towards the water. Houses within the floodplain. And within the RPA. As you can see, the current conditions of the shed uh, butt up to the property line um, and a 16 by 16 shed is in, or impervious structure is in place. The proposed uh, development shows a set five feet set off from the property line and the change in, uh, in structure size. 
These are the proposed mitigation plantings. Pictures from uh, the left side of the house uh, shooting towards the proposed area. This would be where, uh, oops, going back towards the, uh, the proposed shed. Again, staff does recommend approval for this uh, exception, given that all other necessary local, state, and federal permits are obtained, that a $500 surety acceptable to the county attorney's office is made, and that all development activities located in the special flood hazard area shall comply with Article 6, Division 3, floodplain area regulations of the JCC zoning ordinance. This uh, exception will become null and void if not started by March 14, 2019, with extensions requested no later than six weeks prior to the expiration. Thank you. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. Where the uh, former shed was, is that uh, a concrete slab now? What's there? Yes, I believe so. So they're going to remove the concrete slab? Uh, I will defer that question to the applicant. Uh, I'm not sure. Then they're going to erect a new concrete slab where they're going to put the shed. Yes, that is my understanding. This is sort of a general question and may be outside your purview, but with that third uh, requirement about complying with the, uh, uh, the floodplain regulations, do you know in general what, what, what does that mean? <laughs> I do not. Mr. Wilson made that. Okay. <laughs> Just a general explanation. Excellent question. Um, the shed itself is too small to qualify for a building permit but the shed still must comply with the floodplain regulations of the county. Um, and, and in this case, it re would require to be tied down in some form or fashion so it doesn't float in case we get a major uh, storm event. That's what it's intended to oh, okay. cover. So that in the event of a storm, <coughs> it doesn't end up in the Chickahominy River. Correct. Where I'm going to run into it with my boat. Right. <laughs> okay. And, and uh, if I may address Mr. Hughes's uh, question, the existing concrete will be removed. So there is a, a, an actual a net reduction in impervious cover in the area of the shed from and 256. And will be stabilized? It will be stabilized um, in the uh, existing grass condition that the rest of the lot is. Here. Any other questions for staff? This time I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the applicant like to come forward and address the board? I'm uh, Chris Eckenfels, the homeowner of this uh, parcel. So if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer and oblige. Any questions for Mr. Eckenfels? Okay. I'd like to say that it's good to see you, sir. You too, Billy. How you We're doing? We're friends from, from a long time ago, and your father served with distinction in James City County as a paramedic, right. and I was a pleasure to, uh, to know him as a close friend. And it's good to see that. you. Always good to see you. Th thanks for coming out. Uh, would anyone else like to s speak on this issue? At this time, I'll close the public hearing. Any discussion from the board? Someone like to make a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt KCBE 1807-06091 Tabitha Lane for the uh, approval of the permit that we're okay. to adopt. We have a motion to adopt a resolution to grant the exception for Chesape Chesapeake Bay Board KCBE-18-070 at 6019 uh, Tabitha Lane. Uh, Ms. Parman, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Bott? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. And Mr. Apperson? Yes. Okay, the motion carries and the exception is granted. Thank you for coming out. Our next case is CBE-18-071, <coughs> 300 Rivers Edge. Uh, Mr. Wilson, will you make the presentation, please? Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Mike Wilson again, here to present case CBE-18-071, 300 Rivers Edge. Mr. Michael Matthews of the Structures Group, on behalf of Ms. Patricia Carmichael, has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception for the encroachment into the RPA buffer for the construction of a retaining wall located at 300 
Rivers Edge within the Kings Mill subdivision and James River watershed. Property is further identified as James City County Real Estate Tax Map Parcel Number 513080012A. Parcel was platted in 2001 prior to the revisions to the Chesapeake Bay Act in 2004. Proposed retaining wall will help stabilize the slope at the rear of the property and stop existing erosion. Wall is proposed to be modular style and will have an internal drainage system. This will help promote infiltration and filtered runoff. To compensate for the impervious cover, the proposed mitigation is one understory tree and three shrubs. This does meet county requirements for mitigation. <coughs> Staffs reviewed the application and the exception request and it has determined that the impacts associated with this proposal to be minor for the proposed development. Staff does recommend approval of this exception request and should the board wish to approve, uh, recommend that the following conditions be incorporated into that approval. That the applicant must obtain any other necessary federal, state, local permits as required for the project. That a surety of $500 is required in a form acceptable to the county attorney's office to guarantee the mitigation plantings. That this exception request approval shall become null and void if construction is not begun by March 14, 2019. And that written request for extension uh, to this exception shall be submitted to the Stormwater Resource Protection Division no later than six weeks prior to that expiration date. Again, the applicant request is to construct a retaining wall at 300 River's Edge within the uh, River's Edge section of Kings Mill subdivision as shown here. Further, the project, the property in question is here. Topography of the site uh, as you approach the rear property corner drops off significantly at a three to one or greater slope. The RPA buffer as it affects this property. And from the site plan, uh, slightly different configuration, but uh, the ret proposed retaining wall is located in this location. The RPA buffer is here, just skirting the house. And you can see this topography uh, significantly drops off once you get uh, towards that back property line. Proposed mitigation. Uh, in this location here, a couple site photographs, that's um, the area that we're talking about, uh, that wall would be coming in this direction. And then from the corner of the house, it's in this location here. Again, permit conditions, any other necessary Local federal state permits is required, a $500 surety to guarantee the mitigation, acceptable to the county attorney's office, null and void if this project is not started by March 14, 2019, and that an extension request is needed to be submitted to our office no later than six weeks prior to the expiration date. Be happy to answer any questions the board may have regarding this application. The purpose. Is the purpose of this to uh, for cosmetics, or is it going to serve some sort of uh, structural advantage? Uh, it is, is. Mr. Matthews may correct me, but I don't believe this wall is structural in terms of uh, keeping the house up on top of the slope, but is more to allow safe access around the corner of the house, as well as to prevent and stop some of the erosion that's occurring on that slope. There's some erosion occurring? There is. Well, Mike, you said something that, that I hadn't heard before, internal drainage system. Just a very brief uh, explanation of what, what that means. That's a new term for me. No problem, Mr. Apperson. And again, Mr. Matthews may correct me if I misspeak, but um, behind the wall there will be uh, a series of uh, drainage pipes and stone and filter cloth, to, and that's the, the drainage system that we are talking about. Um, and then that water will uh, move safely through and under the wall without uh, causing any erosion. That's the layman's discussion. <laughs> that's, that's fine. That's good. Thank you. 
Any other questions for the staff? At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the applicant like to come forward and address the board? <coughs> Any questions from the board for Mr. Matthews? Okay, thanks for coming out. Um, anyone else like to speak on this issue? This time I'll close the public hearing. Uh, any discussion from the board? Would someone like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board Case CBE 18-071 at 300 Rivers Ridge. Okay, we have a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception. Ms. Parman, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Bott? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Affers? Yes. Okay, motion carries the exceptions granted. Thank you for coming out this evening. Our next case is another retaining wall at 5034 River Drive. Um, Mr. Wilson? Good evening, Mr. Chair. Again, Mike Wilson here to present case CBE 18-068, 5034 River Drive. Mr. Mike Matthews of the Structures Group on behalf of William Roberts has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of two retaining walls located at 5034 River Drive within the Cypress Point subdivision and Diaskin River watershed. Properties further identified as James City County Real Estate Tax Map Parcel Number 09303-00008. Parcel was platted prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Ordinance in 1990. This house has experienced some foundation and slope failures in the past. The two proposed retaining walls will stabilize the slope and provide a stable foundation for a portion of the house to be reconstructed. Each wall is approximately 130 linear feet long. The first wall will have a top elevation of nine feet and the second wall will have a top elevation of 14 feet. Uh, those are uh, above mean sea level. The mitigation required for this amount of impervious cover is one planting unit, which, <coughs> which equates to 11 shrubs. The proposed mitigation includes 47 shrubs, which does exceed the county ordinance requirements. Staffs reviewed this application and exception request and it determined that the impacts for this proposal to be moderate. Staff does recommend approval of the exception request and should the board wish to approve the, this request, staff recommends that the following conditions be incorporated. That the applicant obtain any other necessary federal, local, state permits is required. That a surety of $1,000 is required in a form acceptable to the county attorney's office to guarantee the mitigation. That this exception request become null and void if construction is not begun one year from tonight's date, March 14, 2019. And that written request for extension to, an, to this exception be submitted to our office no later than six weeks prior to that expiration date. Again, the applicant request is to construct two retaining walls. Subject parcel here is at 5034 River Drive, Cypress Point subdivision, right on the Diaskin River. Here's a um, closer picture of the, uh, of the property in question. The topography of the site um, you can see it does slope significantly. Floodplain as it affects this property uh, would just be at the bottom of the property. And the RPA as it affects this property. RPA actually affects this property in two locations. Uh, one directly off the river and then the second one for off a wetland gut that, um, towards the front of the property. From the site plan application, the two pro proposed walls are in this location. This part of the house, and you'll see a picture here shortly, the foundation has um, uh, fallen away 
and the house is uh, structurally unsound in this location. Proposed mitigation, shrubs in these two locations. From the site, uh, you can see the significant uh, slope here. Uh, this is that foundation that has failed in this location. The rear yard has slum, slumped. Uh, there was an existing uh, wall with tiebacks that has failed, uh, allowing this uh, whole slope to slide down, causing this foundation to uh, fail. From the other side of the property, you can see uh, a lot of the exposed foundation here. And then from the bottom of the property, this is actually a, um, a lattice work, um, non-structural, uh, but you can see the exposed foundation here and, and the failures. Some of the permit conditions, if you recommend approval, would be that uh, there are any other necessary local, federal, state permits uh, must be obtained, $1,000 surety to guarantee the mitigation plantings. These exception requests would be null and void if not started one year from tonight, March 14, 2019, and an extension request be submitted to our office no later than six weeks prior to that expiration. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have regarding Put that this. picture back up, uh, back of the house. I, um, that one? I, um, well, the good of the part has all that been eroded away? I mean, I mean <coughs> that's all exposed foundation has. That foundation is exposed. Um, Mr. Matthews could describe uh, a little more detail if, if it's necessary, how much of that foundation has become exposed from the, from the slope failure. I don't, I don't believe the entire um, block wall that we see here has been exposed, but I, I would venture a guess at least half of it has been. Was that where the block wall is? Was that an addition or was that a part of the original house? <coughs> Again, I would let Mr. Matthews um, put his uh, expertise uh, on to that question. I believe the answer is it was an addition that was not done properly. And this property owner didn't have anything to do with that? This property owner did not have anything to do with that. And is this block... The block, this is a new block. This is the block that's been there for a while. It's been there for a while. Um, my, it's proposed to all come out and be rebuilt in the same footprint uh, properly. Well, once there are two more walls. photos to where it should, like the whole back of the property. Is, is, is that the corner we were looking at? On, this on one, the, yes. Yeah, that's yes, where we were looking at. Okay. Some significant erosion there. Looks like something needs to be done pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't it's, think the retaining wall is going to do it. But you have some structural. I, um, think, I think the house needs to be taken care of before retaining walls. Yeah, Mr. Matthews could describe that, uh, what's proposed for the house, the main structure of the house as well. Any other questions for the staff? Um, at this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the applicant like to come forward and address the board? Matthews, if I can help. Oh, yes, what, what is the sequence of construction for this? There, the rear elevation foundation wall has collapsed, um, exposing the footing, um, as Mr. Walter had asked. If, um, there are going to be helical piles placed under those footing, that footing, the length of the rear elevation. You also asked if that was an addition. That is an addition. This is a new property owner, and uh, that addition was not constructed compliance manner. Do you have any idea how much erosion has occurred in the back of the property? Yes, we presented a, a uh, photograph taken in 2000, 2000 of the property. It actually had a um, bulkhead along the shore, a riprap, and manicured back up to the house. And uh, saw that photo and today we can totally show it. So it's a lot of erosion, and it's more of a, um, uh, it's a global failure of the earth. It's not like a sliding failure down the slope. It's a 
circular pit. It's actually moved in this manner. The bottom of the earth is down by the dock. Do you feel that uh, with your engineering and the way that uh, to protect that wall from or that house from falling, that uh, it, it will do the job to hold it? Yes, Mr. Walter, the um, foundation for the retaining wall is going to be one of concrete and piles. How the piles? Oh, the piles will probably be anywhere from 30 to 40 feet in area. Any other questions? I hope you have good weather and you can get started on <laughs> this really soon. Uh, it looks pretty I've precarious. I've seen this from, from the river. And it's... Uh, Drastic, to say the least. I've never seen a, a wall collapse like that. It's, it's in terrible shape. It's just, it's, yeah. Boy, I, th I think the realtor should show photos of this to anybody buying a house on the waterfront, you know, to let people know you got to take care. If you're going to live on the water, boy, you have to take care of your property. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Would anyone else like to speak on this issue? At this time, I'll close... Um, close the public hearing. Any discussion from the board? This is the I, first I, one I, of these I've seen. Uh, I've seen it from I, I don't, the river. I, I, it's, uh, it's drastic, in my opinion. It's the way I would describe it. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm dubious as to whether or not a retaining wall is going to fix the problem. Once this gets going, it just keeps on going. A lot of times. Uh, I think this is the first one I've seen that's in, in this kind of shape. Wow. Am I, am I, I, correct, am I correct to say that they're going to put piling in, uh, piling down to set these on? Yeah, that was well, my the answer. piling is the only way it will hold it. If you drive it down to no refusal and put, it, put it, the, the uh, concrete footing on there, it will hold the building. Um, any other discussion from the board? Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to grant the exception to the James City County Wetland Permit of Chesapeake Bay Board. Okay, we have a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board KCBE-18-068 at 5034 River Drive. Ms. Parman, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Bott? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Gusman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Affers? Yes. Okay, motion carries and... Wilson, will you keep us advised with some photographs and how this progresses? Certainly. Thank you. This, is, this has a lot of lessons for a lot of people, including this board. Um, okay, the exception is granted. Thank you for coming out. Our next case is CBE-18-028, 19 and 20 mile course. Mr. Long. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Trevor Long, uh, JC Watershed Man um, Planner, um, here to present CBE-18-028, 19 and 20 mile course of the Kings Mill subdivision. Mr. Dean Van Arsdale, RVA Construction, has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of a wooden bulkhead with backfill and shoreline stabilization with quarter logs adjacent to Kingsmill Pond located 19 mile course and 20 mile course within the mile course section of the Kingsmill subdivision and the College Creek watershed. Parcels platted in 1974 prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990. The home at 20 mile course was built in 1982. The home at 19 uh, is currently under construction and it was approved under CBE-16-033 at the October 14th, 2015 Ches Bay Board Meeting. Um, there is evidence of past beaver activity on some of the small trees uh, present at the shoreline, um, and there is an old wooden structure landward of the shore at 20 mile course, and the decks on 19 mile course were previously approved to be reconstructed as part of the, the CBE approval. Um, According to revised drawings submitted, the construction of the wooden bulkhead will start on 20 mile course, approximately 50 feet north of the common property line with 19 mile course. Proceeds in a southerly direction for approximately 302 feet along the shoreline uh, and the shoreline treatment then changes to core log stabilization due to a change in water depth 
and proceeds in an easterly direction for approximately 105 feet. The shoreline treatment changes back to a wooden bulkhead and continues to the uncommon property line with an 18 mile course, approximately 90 feet forward. There are, t there are 10 foot proposed return walls at the end of each bulkhead segment and the wooden bulkhead will be secured with two different methods, helical horizontal screw anchors or batter piles uh, when mature trees will be damaged with the helical screw treatment. The applicant is also praising, proposing two planting units of vegetative mitigation. Uh, these include two swamp white oaks and two flying dogwoods, two eastern redwoods, four spice birch and two winterberry. Um, this is double the mitigation required um, by, by county, county requirements. And it is also strongly suggested that the applicant plant the quarter logs with a combination of wool grass and pickerel weed. Um, staff has reviewed this application along with the WQIA and does recommend approval for this exception request um, under the following conditions. The applicant must obtain all other necessary federal and state and local permits as required for the project. A surety of $1,500 is required in a form acceptable to the county attorney's office to guarantee the mitigation plantings for 19 mile course and a surety of $500 for 20. The owners or the contractor provide written permission from the Kingsmill Community Service, Services Association to allow the barge access and stockpile lay down area as proposed. All development activities located in the special flood hazard area shall comply with Article 6, Division 3, floodplain area regulations of the James City County Zoning Ordinance and receive all required approvals, permits prior to commencement of such activities. And this exception request approval shall become null and void if construction has not begun in this date one year from today, March 14th, 2019 and a written request for an extension shall be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division no later than six weeks prior to the expiration date. <coughs> Again, the applicant request is to construct a bulkhead with backfill uh, along the entire waterfront property of 19 and 20 mile course. Um, here you can see the vicinity. Uh, this is 20 mile course within the Kings Mill subdivision. In the aerial photo, you can, uh, you can view the, uh, the stabilization starting here and wrapping around the bend to uh, 20. Uh, the topography shows slope down towards the water in both, uh, both properties. And the resource protection area does, uh, does encroach um, up into both parcels. Um, for the site plan, um, the quarter logs start here uh, and then the rest uh, wraps around, around the bend of both parcels. Details uh, for, uh, for the improvements, um, quarter logs are, are visualized here. Some site photographs um, down near the water. Um, showing more of the shoreline, um, some, some erosion occurring. And another uh, showing more detailed um, images of the shoreline. Uh, again, staff does recommend approval of this exception, um, given that all of the necessary federal, state, and local permits are, requi are as required for this project are obtained. That a surety of $1,500 is required um, for 19 mile course, and a surety of $500 is required for 20 mile course. Um, the owners of the contracted uh, contractor provide written permission from KCSA. Um, and to allow barge access and stockpile lay down. And that the expiration date um, of this exception become null and void if not started by March 14th, 2019 with written request for an extension uh, be submitted no later than six weeks prior to the expiration date. 
Thank you. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have at this time. The, so the, the, the water, what's the water body in question? Oh, sorry. Uh, the water body in question um, would be the College Creek watershed. Um, it's along the Kings Mill Pond. Oh, okay, but it's a pond. Cause it's it's not non-tidal, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. Just wanted to, how is a barge going to go up non-tidal water? Uh, I will defer that question to Mr. Wilson. Excellent question, Mr. Hughes. Um, I'm going to go back to the vicinity map. They are proposing access uh, from Kings Mill Pond Dam. Um, there is a, a road, a maintenance road that leads down to there. They were proposing to bring the barge in there, uh, put in the barge at that point, and use part of this area as their lay down, and then uh, just uh, go across the water. If for some reason they couldn't use the barge, then they have to come back and uh, make another application? Um, not necessarily. It would depend on their method of, of con uh, construction access to the property. I do believe uh, the Antons do own another piece of property somewhere on, um, on Kings Mill Pond, and that I think that would be their secondary location for barge access. Thank you. How, how long do the uh, core logs last? In this condition, uh, in this environment, they will last between uh, 10 and 15 years. I think uh, we haven't seen too many projects proposed like, like this one. Any other questions for the staff? At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the applicant like to come forward and address the board? Thank you. Uh, my name is Dean Van Arsdale. I'm uh, the owner of RVA Construction. We're the general contractors on this project for the Antons. Uh, they couldn't come this evening because they're out of the country. Uh, they're kind of an absentee ownership. Um, they're making a considerable investment in this piece of property, and uh, the Antons are very concerned that they want to protect this investment. So that's why they're undertaking this project and with regard to these bulkheads. Um, I brought David with me. He is the engineer of record who submitted those drawings that you looked at. So we're here to answer any questions that you may have. Are you having much erosion on the property? There is some that's, that's evidenced. Um, as you could kind of see from one of those earlier pictures, one of those trees had fallen over, was close to falling over from one of those earlier pictures. Um, if you were to go over there right now, there was a, a tree on the other side of the pond that has just fallen in. Um, that's one of the, yeah, that picture, that's one of the main reasons the Ensons want to do this is to maintain that, that forced look and to help screen their property from the surrounding properties across the, the pond. Do the adjacent properties have bulkheads of this nature? There is one uh, this way on that picture that has been previously constructed at one time. The one that's built there now is more projected into the water, uh, a little bit more obtrusive. What we're trying to do is build one right at the water's edge uh, so it wouldn't project out into the water like that previous project has been done. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak on this issue? At this time, I'll close the public hearing. Any discussion from the board? Okay, would someone like to make a motion? Harvey, it's your turn to make a motion. <laughs> All right, I'd like to make a motion in granting the CDE. Okay, we have a motion to adopt a resolution to grant the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board KCBE-18-028 at 19 and 20 uh, mile course. Um, Ms. Parman, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Bott? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. And Mr. Apperson? Yes, please. Uh, motion carries and the exception is granted. Thank you for coming out. 
Uh, next case, CBE-18-064, 136, John Wickham. Evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Trevor Long, Watershed Planner. Uh, here to present CBE-18-064, 136, John Wickham. Uh, Mr. Tim Dean of Draper Aiden Associates, on behalf of Scott and Janet Kruger, has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the reconstruction of a single family residence located at 136 John Wickham within the uh, Kings Mill subdivision and the College Creek watershed. This parcel was platted in 1988 prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990. The existing house is proposed to be demolished and a new house built. Uh, the difference between the existing impervious cover and the proposed impervious cover is approximately 1,300 square feet less, or an 8.4% difference. The impervious cover within the RPA is approximately 5,200 square feet under existing conditions. However, the proposed increase, um, proposed, it is proposed to increase to 7,250 square feet. Um, this increase of 2,050 square feet of impervious cover is the determining factor in bringing this case before the board tonight. Um, the mitigation required for the proposed increase within the RPA is five planting units. Um, this, the applicant is proposing 11 understory trees and 27 shrubs along with a significant pervious paver and underground infiltration area of approximately 4,000 square feet. This infiltration area is located immediately adjacent to the RPA and the proposed mitigation exceeds county requirements. Uh, we, staff has received a WQIA on this property and um, has reviewed the application and exception request determining the impacts associated with the proposal are moderate. Staff does recommend approval for this exception request uh, given that the applicant obtain all other necessary federal, state, and local permits as required, that a surety of $5,000 be made out um, to a form acceptable of the county attorney's office to guarantee the mitigation plantings and pervious paver installation, that the design of the pervious paver installation shall conform to the standards and specifications of the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality Stormwater Design Specification Number 7 Permeable Pavement, the latest edition, and that this exception request um, approval become null and void if construction has not begun by March 14th, 2019, with written request for an extension um, to be submitted uh, no, no later than six weeks prior to the expiration date. Again, the applicant request is to construct a new family, single family home, and demolish an old one. Um, at 136 John Wickham, located in the Kings Mill subdivision. Uh, this aerial photo shows, shows the parcel in question um, with topography shown above, uh, slopes down significantly towards the water as, as you get further, further along. The resource protection area uh, as shown above um, encompass, encapsulates much of the property. The existing condition of, um, of the site plan uh, 50 foot RPA buffer here and 100 foot RPA buffer here. The proposed conditions uh, show, um, show the house and the proposed pervious paver um, and infiltration unit uh, here and the proposed mitigation units here and here. The above site photo looks uh, at the house from from the back of the property uh, closest to, to the, uh, the water. Um, this photo shows, um, shows a view towards the water from the existing patio. Uh, and this um, looking towards the left of the house um, and a picture of the patio and existing structure. Uh, this, this photo is from the right and shows uh, the existing house and uh, patio. Again, staff does recommend approval of this project given that all other necessary state, federal, and local permits are obtained. 
that a $5,000 surety acceptable to the county attorney's office is made out. Um, and the design of the pervious paver um, meets the standards and specs of the VADEQ stormwater specification number seven permeable pavement. And that this exception become null and void if not started by March 14th, 2019 with written ex um, extensions requested no later than six weeks prior to the expiration. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you all may have. The requirement is for five planning units. And what, what are they proposing? How many planning units? Uh, they are proposing, uh, should be, that would be five uh, planting units, 11 understory trees, 27 shrubs, and um, the pervious paver. So that's in, ex in excess of, of the requirement. Okay. Yes, sir. You mentioned that there's going to be a reduction, 8% reduction in the overall imperviousness of the site. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, 8.4%. But the, dem the, how the existing structure and the proposed structure are going to be, there's going to be an increase in the, in the footprint? Uh, the planned, um, the proposed uh, structure, they have increased it uh, slightly since the original uh, proposition. Where is the reduction? Is, uh, is the house that's going there going to be a larger footprint than the house that's there now? Uh, I would re refer that to the applicant um, to answer more, more fuller, fully. The uh, sidewalks <coughs> and all that are out there, the patios, are they going to remain or are they going to be removed? Uh, that I will also uh, defer to the applicant. Okay, uh, let me open the public hearing and if the applicant would come forward to uh, answer a couple of the questions that have been raised. Good evening, Tim Dean, Draper and Associates. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, myself and uh, the project architect are here too, so if we have any other building questions, we can certainly answer. Okay, um, can you explain about, you know, what's being reduced and, uh, where, you know, where the reduction in the impervious cover is sure. coming from? The, the house itself, the current house, will be is smaller than what is proposed. Um, but your question about the sidewalks and other pavement areas and such, those are going to be eliminated and not put back in. Um, the reduction comes in largely with the increase of the uh, pervious pavement in the front of the house in the parking courtyard and such. So um, the house is bigger, but pavements are going to be less, actually more non-existent in the rear, and then the pervious pavement um, offsets it to reduce the overall um, impervious footprint. Okay. okay, any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak on this issue? At this time, I'll close the public hearing. Any discussion from the board? This is an un a little unusual. bit unusual yeah, one yeah, as well. Very unusual. But um, it seems to meet our requirements. Okay, uh, would someone like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board Case CBE 18 064 at 5034 River Drive. I'm okay. sorry. Is that the wrong one? It is the wrong one. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the. <laughs> sorry, Mr. Clark. It's okay. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the, ex the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board Case CBE 18 028. At 19 and 20. Zero, zero, Mike, six, the wrong one. We're on John Wickham, correct? Correct. Let me try this again. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board case CBE 18064. This is a typo. It, it That's is why I'm reading it wrong. <laughs> um, 136 John Wickham. Do you have that correct? Yes. That, that is correct. Thank Apologies you. Apologies to everyone. No, that's okay. Ms. Parman, will you call the roll, yes, please? Uh, Mr. Bott? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Ackers? Yes. Okay. Motion carries, and uh, we've granted the exception. Thank you for coming out. Our next case is CBE-18-065, 116 Nottinghamshire.
my apologies, Mr. Bot. <laughs> I caught that typo attention. just as you were starting to read that. Should have paid better attention. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Mike Wilson here to present case CBE-18-065-116 Nottinghamshire. Mr. Larry Walk of Walk Right Construction on behalf of Joseph and Phyllis Lee has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception for encroachments into the RPA buffer for construction of a single family dwelling on property located at 116 Nottinghamshire within section 12 of the Fords Colony subdivision and the Powhatan Creek watershed. Property is further identified as James City County tax map parcel number 323-310-0034. Parcel was platted prior to the readoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 2004. The wetlands were redelineated re by Mr. Matt Raw in 2016. The lot has RPA buffer and RPA wetlands that cover 90% of the lot. An application for a single family dwelling was recently approved at the December 2017 Chesapeake Bay Board meeting. This application has slightly more impervious cover within the RPA and the seaward 50 foot RPA. The application now has a side loading garage as opposed to a front loading garage. It has been positioned on the front, prop, front building setback line and has room on either side of the structure for drainage swales. The total impervious cover for the lot is 4,950 square feet of which 3,500 square feet is within the landward 50 foot RPA buffer and 825 Square feet is within a seaward 50 foot buffer. The total amount of impervious cover requires a minimum of nine planting units of mitigation. The mitigation proposal meets these requirements and is acceptable. Some, some of the required mitigation is used as foundation plantings. Staff would request that this property be enrolled in the Turf Love program once the construction is complete. This program does help alleviate problems associated with over-fertilization through the use of soil testing, timing, and rate of application of any fertilizers, and uh, along with proper turf grass selection. Staff also requests that three inches of gravel over filter fabric be installed under the footprint of the deck to help prevent soil erosion. Staff's reviewed this application and the exception request and has determined that these impacts uh, for this proposal are major for the proposed development. Staff does recommend approval with the following conditions. That the applicant obtain any other necessary federal, state, and local permits. That a surety of $3,500 be required in a form acceptable to the county attorney's office to guarantee the mitigation, including the plantings, the turf love program registration, and the gravel under the deck. The applicant must record an affidavit in the land records of the James City County uh, Williamsburg Circuit Court Courthouse regarding the environmental resources, uh, resource restrictions on this lot, the approved resolution and the approved site plan shall be attached to such affidavit. That this exception request become null and void if construction is not begun by March 14, 2019, and that written request for extension to this exception be submitted to our office no later than six weeks prior to that expiration date. <clears throat> Again, they're requesting to build a new single family home at 116 Nottinghamshire within section 12 of the Forest Colony subdivision located here. Aerial photograph, uh, lot is currently wooded. The RPA as it affects this lot from the redelineation of the wetlands. Topography as it slopes uh, from the front to the rear left corner. And from the site plan application, uh, 50 foot RPA here, 100 foot RPA here. Uh, the garage is now side loading here, so there's no concern with any cars parking in the driveway and, and overlapping uh, the sidewalk as in the previous uh, version where the, side, the garage was a front loading garage. The house did encroach closer, slightly closer to uh, the wetland system, uh, normally in a case that has been approved by the board 
if uh, revisions come in and those impacts are less, uh, board would approve those revisions administratively. In this particular case, the impacts are slightly more uh, and it was deemed that it had to come back before the board to be approved. Mitigation plan as proposed. And then some site photographs. Uh, from the site, from the bottom of the wetland system, looking up back towards the house. <coughs> from the neighboring property, looking into the interior of the site. From the approximate middle of the house, looking down towards the wetlands. Uh, looking back up towards the street. And looking uh, at the neighboring property at 120 Nottinghamshire. Again, the permit conditions, any other necessary federal, local, state permits as required, a $3,500 surety acceptable to the county attorney's office. Uh, record an affidavit outlining the environmental restrictions on this property at the courthouse, that this is null and void if this project's not started March 14, 2019, and that any extension request be submitted to our office no later than six weeks prior to that expiration date. Be happy to answer any questions the board may have regarding this application. Did the uh, water quality impact assessment, was that where you got your major impacts determination? Or was yes. this other aspects of this project that contributed to that? Um, Would you restate your question, Mr. Bob? Understanding that the water quality impact assessment is going to determine what the impact's going to be. Were there any other aspects of this project that contributed to the staff's determination of it being a major impact? Um, uh, the, it was the amount of impervious cover within the RPA buffer as a whole, um, plus the uh, how close the impervious cover came to the wetland system uh, proper. happy to answer any other questions. But uh, as I see the mitigation, they're going to uh, go in and uh, get rid of all the um, natural uh, growth that's in there and replace it uh, with new plantings? Uh, they are proposing to interplant the existing tree line, not necessarily remove um, any of the vegetation in this area. The clearing limits for this house would be along here. And the rest of the lot would remain uh, in a forested condition, but they are proposing to interplant that forest. Uh, it's an open canopy. I, yeah, I'm having a little trouble envisioning this. I mean, is it where the, where, where the bulk of these trees are going in is already forested in there? Yes, but when I say forest, I don't mean a heavy canopy. Um, it's, a, it's a scrub shrub wetland. Uh, here, there's a lot of light that comes into the to the forest uh, floor in, in these areas here. Um, the area was previously cleared with this sanitary <coughs> sewer easement uh, in th that runs in this fashion. Mr. Apperson, <laughs> the, <laughs> are the trees going to grow there? Yeah, what I saw primarily is, uh, is pawpaw. As you know, it's a sub canopy tree. Mm -hmm. There's enough light, in my opinion, based on what I see here, to uh, you know push some timber trees to there fair, fairly easily. If not, just clear a ten foot circle around each tree. You know, just remove the overstory, what little bit there is, give it sunlight for a couple of years, and uh, go for it. Any other questions for the staff? Okay. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the applicant like to come forward and address the board? Larry Walk with Walkright Construction. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about this project. Any questions for the applicant? Okay, thank you for coming forward. Would anyone else like to speak on this issue? 
this time I'll close the public hearing. Any discussion from the board? We seem to be running into these situations more and more in the Forest Colony and Kings Mill uh, subdivisions, and we uh, I'm unfamiliar if we've established any kind of policy that we're going to follow. Well, funny you uh, should mention that. We, we are we've discussed doing it before, but we never have gotten to that point. Well, we, uh, we'll talk about this in a little bit later, but we are going to have a work session next month to, uh, uh, to address this issue. Getting into buildability issues on some of these properties that are occurring that ha have not been developed just for these reasons. That's the, how I see it as well. And that's, uh, I hope you'll be able to attend the work session um, next month. To, to address this, uh, is, this question. But right now we do have a case in front of us that we have to act on tonight. Um, there are comments about it? Yes, if you look at this one. Well, this we, we discussed this uh, slash. Lance, uh, this is the second time this parcel has come up uh, before us, correct? Um, Actually, it's the third time. The first time was in uh, 2016. Um, the board approved that application. It, uh, it expired, and Mr. Walk had it uh, reapplied for that same exact exception in December of 2017, which the board did approve again. So second case, third time. kind of requirement to affidavit on the property. Uh, I think the, the board uh, knows that uh, my vote would be, I, I'm not in favor of those at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However, uh, in this particular case, one case, and I don't want to show a, a uh, division in the board of the fact that personal preferences overrule good what land, landscape management. So I would prefer to vote for this, but I object to the affidavit, which will come up in, the, in our work session. Okay. And, and what you know, I've been doing some research on that, too, and at our meeting, I, I hope I'll address some of your concerns well, when we have our work session. Yes, sir. But, okay. Would someone like to make an, a motion concerning this case? I'll make a motion to grant exception uh, to the case CBE1-065. Is that the right number? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, 116 90 Hampshire. Okay, we have a motion to adopt a resolution to grant the exception for CBE 18 065 at 116 Nottinghamshire. Ms. Parman, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Vaught? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Gusman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Affers? Yes. Okay, the motion does carry, and the exception is granted. Thank you for coming out. Our next case is moving down the street, CBE-18-067-120, Nottinghamshire. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. This property is immediately adjacent to 116 Nottinghamshire. This is case CBE-18-067. Mr. Larry Walk of Walk Right Construction has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of single-family dwelling on property located at 120 Nottinghamshire within the Fords Colony subdivision and the Powhatan Creek watershed. The property is further identified as James City County tax map parcel, real estate parcel number 323-310-0033. Lot was platted in 2005 after the 2004 revisions to the Chesapeake Bay Ordinance. This lot has not been developed prior to this proposal. Encroachments into the RPA are necessary to develop the single family house and the house cannot be relocated outside of the RPA. However, the applicant has proposed pipe roof gutters and enrollment into the turf management program in order to minimize impervious area within the RPA. To date, a mitigation plan has not been submitted. 
Staff has reviewed the application and the exception request and determined that the impacts associated with this proposal again to be major for the proposed development. Staff recommends approval uh, with the following conditions incorporated into that approval. That the applicant must obtain any other necessary federal, state, local permits as required. That a surety of $3,500 be required in a form acceptable to the county attorney's office to guarantee the mitigation. Um, and that also includes the turf love program registration that the applicant record an affidavit in the land records at the Williamsburg James City County Courthouse regarding the environmental restrictions on the lot. The approved resolution and the approved site plan shall be attached to such affidavit. <laughs> that this exception request approval be re, um, shall become null and void if construction is not begun by March 14, 2019, and that any written request for extension to the exception request be submitted to our office no later than six weeks prior to that expiration. So the applicant request is to build a single family home at 116, or, um, 120 Nottinghamshire within the Ford's Colony Section 12 uh, subdivision located in this area. <clears throat> From the aerial photograph, you can see this lot is wooded. Sewer pipeline. Um, along the rear of the property line, topography on the site sloping from the front right down to the bottom left, RPA as it affects this property as well, and from the proposed site plan, um, this is a front loading garage here. deck in the back, this is the 50-foot RPA, the 100-foot RPA, and the wetland system in the back. <clears throat> the mitigation plan that was submitted um, at a later time, and photo site photographs shown here from the front of the street, looking into the property. From the neighboring property at 124 Nottinghamshire, looking up uh, across the front of the lot, and then from approximate um, house location, looking down into the wetland system. So staff does recommend approval with any other necessary local, state, federal permits as required that a $3,500 surety be accept, uh, to guarantee the mitigation be acceptable to the county attorney's office, that they record an affidavit in the uh, courthouse regarding the environmental restrictions on the lot, that this become null and void if not started by March 14, 2019, and that any extension request be submitted to our office no later than six weeks prior to that expiration. Be happy to answer any questions the board may have. How, how does the, um, the setback with this one compare to the, the adjacent houses? Uh, can you go back to your diagram where you showed the neighborhood? This one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, where, where's the front of this property gonna be? Like, I, I just wanna see how it compares to the other houses. It's, it's gonna be pretty much in, lined up in a row with the other house. Okay, um, so if we, if we look at the, if I go to this diagram here, that front setback is right here. Now that front setback is, that's in the county ordinance? Is that's that, actually a Ford's Colony. That's a Ford's Colony setback. Ordinance. Setback. Uh, and that is a 20, um, I believe it's a 20 foot, it may be a 15 foot setback um, off to the right of way. How about in reference to the other houses there? Is it, is it further back than or about equal to the other houses? It's about equal to the other houses. What, you, what you're going to see here is what you see here. And, uh, On the back side too? Mm-hmm. Did you say that there was not a mitigation plan in place? Or um, I did say that. 
Um, apparently one was submitted at a later time in the report not revised. My apologies. Did the issue plan review be acceptable to staff? Um, it, yes. Any questions for the staff? Right, at this time, I'd like to open the uh, public hearing. Would the applicant like to come forward and address the board? with Walk Bay Construction. So just quick background here. What we've done, we own both of these lots um, and we've taken the concept of what we were going to build on 116 and we're moving it over to one, the same footprint that you approved back in December. We haven't had this lot up <coughs> for consideration by you before. You have not. Just the, the same plan same proximity to the street was approved on the other lot, but uh, not for this specific property. Any questions for the applicant? Um, thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak on this issue? At this time, I'll close the public hearing. Discussion from the board? I don't particularly care for it. it yeah. uh, taking down trees and putting more trees up, I don't see where the mitigation goes much. Lots that are worse than this, and we haven't approved them. No. Suppose we've had some worse than this, and we have approved them. But I agree with you there. Not a lot of good choices here. Any other comments? Would someone like to make a motion? All right, I'll do it. I'd like to make a motion to approve the check from CBE 18. Okay, we have a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board KCBE-18-067 at 120 Nottinghamshire. Ms. Parman, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Bott? No. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Afferson? Yes. Okay, the motion carries and the exception uh, has been granted. Thank you. We're coming out. Our next case is CBE-18-066, 125 Congressional. Uh, Mr. Long. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, Trevor Long, Watershed Planner, here to present CBE-18-066, 125 Congressional. Mr. Larry Walk of uh, Walkwright Construction has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception on behalf of Eric and Renee Gibson uh, for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of a single family dwelling. Um, the parcel was platted in 1987 prior to the adoption of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance in 1990. The total impervious cover for the lot is 6,615 square feet and the required mitigation for this amount of impact would be 14 planting units. The proposed planting um, units consist of five canopy trees, 12 understory trees, and 80 shrubs. This would equate to 11 uh, planting units, leaving the proposal three units short of the required planting. In similar circumstances, uh, the planting unit deficit is made up by a monetary donation to the county's Chesapeake Bay Mitigation Fund in the amount of $1,000 per planting unit. Therefore. Staff requests that a donation of $3,000 be made to the Chesapeake Bay Mitigation Fund. The applicant is also proposed to enroll in the Turf Love Program once construction is complete, um, eliminating or alleviating problems associated with over-fertilization um, through the methods of soil testing, time and rate application, um, and proper turf grass selection. Additionally, the applicant has proposed to use pipe gutters in order to minimize the effects of impervious area um, proposed. Staff also requires the applicant record an affidavit in the land records of the Williamsburg James City County Circuit Court regarding the environmental resource restrictions on this lot. Um, this case is here before the board um, due to the fact that uh, the dwelling impacts the 50-foot seaward RPA buffer. 
Um, staff has reviewed the application and exception requests and has determined impacts associated with the proposal to be major um, for the proposed development. Um, staff does, however, recommend approval for this exception request with the following conditions incorporated into the approval. That the applicant obtain all other necessary federal, state, and local permits. That a surety of $5,000 be required in a form acceptable to the county's, uh, the account the county attorney's office to guarantee the mitigation, including plantings and registration of turf love program. That the applicant uh, record an affidavit in the land records of the Williamsburg James City County Circuit Court. Um, a payment of $3,000 be made into the county's Chesapeake Bay Mitigation Fund. And that this exception request become uh, null and void if construction has not begun by March 14th, 2019 with written request of an extension to the exception to be submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division no later than six weeks prior to the expiration date. Again, uh, this applicant is requesting to construct a single fam family development um, at 125 Congressional, located within the Ford's Colony subdivision, outlined in blue. Aerial photo shows the parcel um, in, lo in relation to other houses uh, and the sanitary sewer line uh, running, running towards, towards the back of the lot. The topography shows um, fairly consistent slope towards, towards the RPA, uh, which is um, shown above. Uh, the above site plan shows uh, the proposed um, impacted areas, the 50-foot RPA buffer and the 100-foot RPA buffer. This proposed retaining wall associated with the dwelling and uh, the, the existing wetland line. Proposed mitigations are um, planned to go along, along the existing structure and are outside the house. Uh, a site photo from the street looking in towards the proposed uh, area of development. Uh, a photo taken from uh, the adjacent property owner's yard uh, facing towards the uh, proposed um, driveway and towards the proposed house. Again, staff does recommend approval of this exception uh, given that all other necessary local, state, and federal permits are required. Uh, the $5,000 surety is made out acceptable to the county attorney's office and a $3,000 payment into the county's Chesapeake Bay Mitigation Fund be made. Uh, and the applicant record an affidavit in the land records of the Williamsburg James City County Circuit Court regarding the environmental resource restrictions on this lot. And that this project um, extension, um, excuse me, exception become null and void if not started by March 14th, 2019, with extensions requested no later than six weeks prior to the expiration. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you all may have. Yeah, can you put up the, uh, the diagram showing the setbacks? Yes. Let's, let's look at that again. <laughs> so, wait, wait, just sh show me again. So it's a long, skinny driveway coming in between the two adjacent houses, right? Yes, sir. And I mean, this is a <laughs> this is a strange looking lot. The aerial photograph probably gives a better. Absolutely. Yes. So, so it's sort of a uh, lollipop, <laughs> a long driveway. I way. I don't know, it's sort of like, what was the planning department thinking when this got approved? Well, they didn't have a Chesapeake Bay Act, right? Um, yes, sir. Um, okay, let's go back to the diagram again. So, why can't the house be pulled forward closer to the, closer to the driveway? Why, what's preventing them from pulling the house Forward, where, you know, are there some setbacks that are uh, would be causing problems? I'll ref uh, defer that question to the applicant uh, as to why not. Um, it seems to me, if they pull it forward, they can get out of the, you know, the the seaward RPA uh, quite a bit. 
Um, I would suspect there might be some side yard setbacks. <clears throat> side yard. Well, the, you're not on the street. The, uh, the, the applicant can probably explain it a little bit better, but it looks like uh, you have so far you can go from the side yard, and so I suspect what they've got is close to the front as they can. Yes, yeah, not. We, when you say the side yard, which borders are you talking about? Uh, the dashed lines um, shown here are the property line. Uh, so this retaining wall goes directly along uh, this uh, this um, property line, comes around here into the wetlands and down along the side. Give me a second. What you're saying, what, did uh, this is set the setback from this? Yes. And, and from, from this? That, and they turned the house more and put it more into the wetlands. But the wetlands are back here. That's the 50 foot. The red hash mark is the 50 foot. Um, Yes, sir. Uh, this is the 50 foot, and this would be the 100 foot RPA buffer line. Okay, so they're, they're forward like this, aren't they? Get, you know. Well, I think the applicant could probably okay. explain that a little bit better. All, all right, I'll leave that question uh, for the applicant. Um, any other questions from the board for the staff? Okay. At this time, uh, I'd like to open the public hearing. Um, would the applicant come forward? And one more time, state your name for the record. Um, to answer your question, Mr. Justman, if we tried or attempted to move the house more forward on the lot, we're going to get into some to topography issues. The lot currently slopes uh, right to left, and we've got to have sufficient room to have some grading to uh, to flatten out the area for the house as well as for the driveway uh, without major retaining wall impact. Uh, you also do have the side setbacks that come into play. Uh, we're already fairly close to the right side. So why can't, why can't you tell me again why you can't pull it 10 or 20 feet forward? Well, if you can see the topography lines, they're coming right to left across the property. So the further back on the lot, the the less impact you have uh, from that topography. So if you're way up on the front at the end of that apron, you've got seven or eight feet of slope uh, coming across there. So you're going to have to contend with that on the front of your house, uh, more steps, retaining walls, things of that nature. So that's we've done our best to try to design a house that's moderate in size. Um, to have a front load garage versus a courtyard, which would create more concrete. So given the fact that this was a buildable lot at the time that it was uh, platted, um, you know, and there is a client involved in this uh, particular project, we have tried to take all of those things into consideration. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Wolfson if you sort of concur with that. Uh, what are your thoughts about pulling it forward more? <clears throat> You're going to cause more problems pulling it forward, or I, I know it's going to be more expensive, but uh, getting it further back from the wetlands? What Mr. Walk uh, stated with, with increased steps and, and retaining walls is true um, uh, by pulling it forward. I would uh, let the board know that construction costs aren't necessarily a determining factor in an, uh, whether an application is approved or not. Certainly you could, as a board, um, suggest that Mr. Walk uh, look at pulling it forward to lessen the impacts to the 50-foot seaward buffer. In my opinion, by moving it forward, you're not um, necessarily going to be eliminating any, if at all, impacts to the 50-foot buffer because they're just going to be sliding in this manner uh, in the 50-foot buffer. Um, so if, if your goal is to reduce or lessen the impacts to the 50-foot seaward buffer, I don't think moving it forward necessarily accomplishes that due to the due to the uh, nature of the wetland system that surrounds this property. Um, there is the wetland system also 
and then it's not shown here, and I apologize, but uh, the wetland system also comes up here on this property. Uh, it, it's off the property in this location, and then comes back up, and it's this bump out or thumb. Well, the, okay, okay, so that's wetlands that's, also. That's also wetlands, and that's what's causing this 50-foot RPA buffer to be in this location. Um, so by sliding everything forward, which technically they can do, you're not necessarily reducing any impact. You're just, to the 50-foot buffer, you're just sliding it uh, around. So what about rotating the house? It's, again? If you, if you rotated the house clockwise, couldn't you get a much bigger chunk of the house with it, you know, out of the, uh, out? Yeah, out by, the, the by sliding this corner this way, this part of the house would be over here. So you'd be affecting this part of the landward 50-foot buffer. Um, that may reduce the impact to the seaward 50 slightly. Um, uh, this is a difficult lot. Uh, it is something we would be discussing at next month's work session. Um, at what point or what percentage of reduction in that seaward 50 uh, buffer, uh, what, what sort of reduction in impervious cover would be acceptable? It was staff's opinion that you could slide this lot, this house and the impact around not really affect, you know, within 10% of, of what Mr. Walk has proposed. And it was for that reason um, that an affidavit would be required um, because the, the environmental restrictions are so great on this lot. Um, certainly it's not as great as we're here to propose to fill in the wetlands as we have seen on some applications, but uh, it is, it is a significant impact. I don't know. <clears throat> Something rotating the house, you could get maybe half, you know, half of the house, you know, half of the footprint of the house out of the, um, out of the, uh, the C word or RPA. Now you, you have what about, looks like less than a quarter of it. About a quarter of it, I would estimate. This would be. Twenty five hundred square feet. I really don't think rotating it's going to change the uh, look at it. If you rotate it uh, clockwise, uh, uh, you've got your uh, island that comes in at the point there, so it just pushes it forward. Uh, you don't think if, what about, you know, what about putting the house, you know, like parallel to this, put, you know, putting it like that? Let's go back to the picture that showed how this is going to be oriented around the neighboring houses. That picture? <clears throat> this one does show the wetland line here, uh, Mr. Gussman, that's mm -hmm. really impacting this lot. Um, and that line was recently, I'd say within the last six months, uh, delineated by Mr. Roth. But what are the topo lines on this one? Topo line. They're two foot what contour thing? interval, Mr. Uh, Waltrip. Well, you're about six and a half feet elevation of what the building that wants to put it on to the front side. Why, why couldn't you put the house like in here? In, in here. <coughs> that's, that, that's what I'm wondering. You know, if the, if the house was located like this. You're already into that topo anyway. Yeah. So all you're doing is moving it forward. You understand what I'm the yeah, I'm suggesting, you know, if they build the house like this, mm -hmm. then only about half of it's in the you know, the C word. Also reducing the overall footprint of the house. Back to the picture. 
think what you're recommending is moving the house further to what would be my left, but by doing so, you're going to put the house right in the back view of the existing right right now the house as far as visual impact to the two existing homes that is one to consider while they're back of their pool that they've installed there where they're now looking if it's to be rotated mm -hmm. and i really think we gain very little by moving the house forward. I mean, you are going to have a little bit of concrete from the driveway that's taken out. From a cost perspective, that's not the decision. Okay. But but you'd have, you could maybe locate, ha have half of the house out of the uh, seaward. I think we probably could move the house forward three or four feet from where it is right now. still have a driveway we've got to get in and out of and have a turnaround area as well. If we jam this thing all the way up into the front there, they're going to have to back all the way out of that piped in driveway. Well, I can appreciate the concern. Uh, not our concern. Uh, we have to look into the uh, bathroom window. Uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, but I also don't think you do. I mean, the more you rotate the house that way, the more it's going to be in impacted the other side of the RPA. But you're pulling it out of the seaward RPA. Um, and we're not suggesting this, but uh, would you be uh, inclined to uh, ask us to hold it off for a month while you uh, get with staff and see if you can move the house uh, down to reduce the impact? What I would like to do is see if you would approve it as it is with us moving it forward about three months. Okay, well, we can vote on it tonight. All right, thank you. Would anyone else like to speak on this issue? At this time, I'll close the public hearing and have discussion from the board. Well, let me start off. I'm, I'm having problems with this one, and I'm not sure the they, they've minimized the impacts. I, I think you could do a, maybe a smaller house with a smaller footprint, and I, I, I still don't understand why it can't be pulled, pulled more think, out I of there. I think we should defer this. Well, he doesn't want it deferred. He wants us to vote on it. He would have to... Well, do we, we have the option to defer? Uh, do we have the option to defer? It has to be requested by the applicant, is my understanding. So we have to vote it up. Yes, again. Mr. Walk requested that uh, you vote on the application with the house As being moved tonight, forward yes. three feet. So, um, would you like to? Oh, sure. He can. If we turn it down, he can then reconsider and submit a new application. So, um, I don't think I can approve it because I don't I think, think you've right. real, they've been really creative in trying to uh, minimize the impact. The setback was from the street. Sure. Had, it, it's supposed this to be is a weird orientation. Th this is such a strange orientation. If the board decides to vote against this application, this application could not be submitted for another year. It would have to be modified in some form or fashion in order to be uh, heard again by the board. Right. Is that clear? <laughs> Meaning that, you know, if if it was voted down and they could come back with a different plan. And we, they just can't bring the exact same they plan. They can't bring the same plan the back. The same plan back for a year. But they could reorient it or come back with a different plan. Okay. That's correct. Well, as I said, I... I'm not comfortable with this. I, I don't think they've been really creative and really thought through, and there may be ways of reducing the impacts here. I'm inclined to agree. 
back to my computer that I was I can't get just press the set uh, my inclination would be a smaller structure I can understand the engineering problems and the topography problems that they had back to turning the house may not gain much percentage wise at all but a smaller structure would be my first choice I will smaller structure beg your pardon Reorient a smaller structure. Smaller structure, yeah. Smaller Probably footprint. Exactly. They, they exactly, it. yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, that, that's a good question. Uh, that, that is not clear. Uh, can I get our legal counsel? I have a legal question here for a second. Okay, what was the question? Can, can we make a motion to, uh, in our sheet here it says a motion to defer, but can we make a motion to deny the resolution to grant the exception. Yes, you can make a motion to deny, yes. Okay. Um, does, it, does anyone want to make that motion? Right. I'd like to make a motion to deny the resolution to grant the exception to the Chesapeake Bay Board case CBE 18-072, and I'm reading the wrong thing, wrong day. I'd like to make a motion to deny the resolution to grant the exception Chesapeake Bay Board case CBE-18-066 at 125 Congressional Street. Okay, we have a motion to deny, and everyone understands that uh, if, if it's denied, it can't come back in its existing form but we, uh, for a year. However, uh, if it was changed, if it was substantially changed with a different footprint or different orientation, then it could be resubmitted as a new application. Um, okay, Ms. Parman, will you call the roll, please? Mm -hmm. Mr. Bott? Yeah, I want to make sure I'm voting yeah. the right way here. If you voting vote to deny. Yeah, you're voting to deny, so a yay vote or a yes vote yes. is a deny, yeah. Mr. Waltrip? Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. Okay. <coughs> So um, the uh, the motion carries and uh, um, the exception has has been den been denied. Uh, thank you for coming out and uh, answering our questions. Uh, you know, please this you know feel free to discuss the matter with the staff if you know you wish to bring it back before the board. Okay, our next case is CBE-18-072. Uh, Mr. Wilson. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I do believe this is the last public hearing case for the night. This is case CBE-18-072, the Southland Corporation 711 at Quarter Path. Mr. Mark Richardson of Timmins Group has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of a paved access road for the redevelopment of the 711 and a proposed restaurant at 3000 Battery Boulevard, 37, or 7337, 7327, and 7341 Pocahontas Trail. The RPA was delineated by Williamsburg Environmental Group, now known as Stantec. They also designed a master stormwater plan for the entirety of the Williamsburg at Quarter Path project. The site has several unique design constraints, including specific requirements from the Virginia Department of Transportation. The entry off Battery Boulevard must be at least 300 feet from the existing intersection of Battery Boulevard and Pocahontas Trail. This, put the, this puts the entrance drive from Battery Boulevard immediately adjacent to the RPA. The entrance drive curves in towards the project site to run parallel to the RPA to the greatest extent practicable. There are approximately 2,400 square feet of impervious cover impacts to the RPA from the drive. The total disturbance to the RPA is 9,750 square feet due to grading the fill slope uh, adjacent to the entrance road and a combined stormwater outfall between the 711 and the adjacent parcel which is a proposed restaurant. Proposed mitigation for these impacts are to replant the disturbed fill slope with 19 planting units and provide the county a natural open space easement of 1,700 square feet. 
Typical mitigation for a project such as this is to replant the areas that can be restored and to provide a county and natural open space easement equal to twice the disturbed RPA area. Should the board wish to approve this request, staff does recommend that the remaining undisturbed RPA also be placed into a natural open space easement. Staff's reviewed the application and the exception request and has determined that the impacts associated with this proposal to be moderate for the proposed development. Staff recommends approval of this exception request and should the board wish to approve the uh, exception, the staff recommends the following conditions be incorporated into that approval. That the applicant obtain any other necessary local, federal, and state permits as required. That the natural open space easement shall also include the undisturbed, remaining undisturbed RPA. That a surety of $5,000 is required to, in a form acceptable to the county attorney's office to guarantee the mitigation plantings and the natural open space easement recordation. That this exception request to approval become null and void should construction not begin by March 14, 2019. And that a written request for an extension to this exception be uh, submitted to our office no later than six weeks prior to that expiration date. Again, the applicant request is to construct a paved access drive uh, to access the property. The four properties mentioned are located in this area. They are part of the quarter path at Williamsburg uh, planned development. Majority of that is in the city of Williamsburg. Um, and for those that are unfamiliar with it, this is Pocahontas Trail, Battery Boulevard comes in here. Um, Immediately past these properties in question is the city county line and then the remainder of the quarter path project including the Harris Teeter uh, and that sub um, shopping center in this location are part of that uh, master plan development. <coughs> From the aerial photograph there are four properties in question the existing 7-Eleven here canopy for the gas pumps here, two entrances off of Pocahontas Trail. Uh, this, it, this parcel here is 3000 Battery Boulevard uh, and this would be the existing uh, mentioned intersection that requires a 300 foot minimum distance before another access can come in. You will see here shortly that this entrance uh, will be closed uh, on this proposed site plan. Topography of the site, uh, typical steep slopes adjacent to the streams uh, bordering this property. The RPA is delineated by Stantec back when the quarter path of Williamsburg property was first uh, rezoned. And from the site plan, um, if you remember, there were two entrances uh, in this location. This one, which is here, is proposed to be closed. This is Battery Boulevard. An entrance is proposed in this location here. That distance must be a minimum of 300 feet uh, to meet VDOT standards. And then you can see this edge of pavement right here. Um, just clipping the outer limits of the landward RPA buffer. And then this impact here would be for the combined stormwater uh, outfall for this 7-Eleven parcel and then this proposed uh, use over here. <coughs> proposed mitigation plan that they are proposing to replant this entire fill slope with 19 planting units. They are proposing a natural open space easement in this area of 1,700 square feet. Staff is recommending that the remaining undisturbed RPA be incorporated into that natural open space easement. Some site photographs uh, of 
the existing 7-Eleven, all of this would be torn out and, and, and moved and rebuilt from the approximate entrance uh, location of the entrance drive, uh, looking into the property at the rear of the property, and then from the adjacent parcel looking at the our, um, undisturbed area here. Again, the permit conditions, any other necessary local, state, and federal permits as required, that a $5,000 surety be uh, submitted acceptable to the county attorney's office to guarantee the plantings, that the natural open space easement also includes the undisturbed RPA on both parcels, that this would exception request is null and void if construction is not started by March 14, 2019, and an extension request be submitted to our office no later than six weeks prior to that expiration date. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have regarding this application. Mr. Wilson, could you go back to, uh, I believe it was the slide that showed the overview, there it is right there. What's the purpose of this this linear encroachment that extends in kind of in the, in the middle of everything? This one? Yeah. That is a stormwater outfall. Okay. Um, okay. The, I, the I understand it. I just wasn't quantity sure. control on the site is underground storage. Uh, quality control has been provided elsewhere on the project site in the city of Williamsburg. Let me ask a question. Uh, I'm looking at po Pocahontas Trail coming, going east, going east. Mm -hmm. why, why is the flow of traffic to this restaurant, you say it's going to be a restaurant? Uh, I believe it is. Why is the traffic area, people coming towards Bush Gardens would turn into the restaurant going in. They've got the traffic coming out of there, coming down and either turning into the 7-Eleven and going into it or coming in on the Battery uh, Boulevard to get around to it. Does that make sense? I would let uh, Mr. Richardson describe the traffic patterns more. But yeah, my understanding of the project, Mr. Waltrip, was that this entrance could only be an exit. It, it could not be an entrance in. It could only be a right exit out. Everybody must come in through this entrance, and then if they were to go to the restaurant, have to go this way uh, once they entered into the project. This is probably a really stupid comment question, but you don't want to have previous pavers if it's a gas station, right? <laughs> Okay, because any <laughs> spill would just go right into the ground. You're correct. There. Okay, it's got to be paved. All right. Yeah, especially if they're storing and treating on site. Yeah. Is there anything to capture? Well, if there's a spill, is there any way to capt capture that, or does that? It is considered a hot spot. Um, I don't know the exact details of this site plan. I don't know if they've been um, submitted or approved at this time, but typically there would be an oil gas. Uh, separator in the storm system. Okay. Uh, and they construct these things as, as a sump system. Okay. Yeah, over the project. Okay. Uh, have you discussed with the applicant the uh, natural space, the RPA um, being placed into a natural space? Uh, natural Mr. Space Richardson and I did have a discussion um, I <laughs> about what I was uh, thinking. We never had a concrete um, resolution as to whether his client would be acceptable uh, to that or not. Okay, any other questions for the staff? This time I'll open the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Richardson, would you like to address the board? Good evening, I'm Mark Richardson with Timmons Group. I'm here to answer any of those questions that you have, uh, whichever one you want to make first. How about the uh, RPA? Um, the client is uh, willing to go ahead and commit that RPA to conservation easement, yes. All right, any other questions for Mr. Richardson? Okay, thank you. Would anyone else like to speak on this issue? At this time, I'll close the public hearing. Um, 
Any discussion from the board? I mean, it's sort of driven by, you know, the VDOT requirements. Uh, and they need access to the, to the business. Okay, would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion uh, to grant the exception CDE 18-072 to include staff's recommendation uh, to incorporate the RPA into uh, the Okay, we have a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception for CDE 18-072, uh, quarter path at 3000 Battery Boulevard and 7327 and 7341 Pocahontas Trail. Um, Ms. Parman, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Bott? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. Okay, motion carries and the exception is granted. Thank you for coming out. Um, we have, that, that concludes our public hearings. We have one matter on the agenda for board consideration, CBE-17-048, 7515 Oak Cove Road. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Jennifer Privet, on behalf of her mother, Ms. Patricia Overman, is requesting a one-year extension to the case CBE-17-048, originally granted March 8, 2017. She's been unable to proceed on her room addition at the speed she initially intended due to factors outside of her control. Staff can Staff concurs with this request with the stipulation that all permit conditions except for the expiration date be reauthorized and the new expiration date be March 14, 2019. I do want to add um, that staff did administratively grant her an extension from March 8th to this meeting uh, to get her through that gap in coverage. I I certainly don't have any problems, you know, if you, you know, doing that. Okay, um, we approved it once before, um, um, and we're just granting an extension. Any discussion among the board? Would someone like to make a motion? I make a motion to grant the extension for Chesapeake Bay Board Case CBE-17-048 at 7515 Oak Grove. Code okay, Grove. we have a motion to uh, grant the extension. Uh, Ms. Parman, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Bott? Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. <coughs> okay, motion carries and the extension is granted. We have no matters of... Got one. Oh, okay. Uh, I'd like to bring up something that uh, maybe the board is not aware of and maybe our people in Dorchester County is not aware of. That pertains to Powhatan Creek. Uh, I've noticed uh, as I boat out through that area, there there is a dangerous, very dangerous area out there before you get to the causeway that goes underneath Jamestown Island. I noticed that the buoys and markers have been changed and pulled out of there. Uh, two markers specifically, a red one and a green one, that makes the turn that goes under the bridge to Jamestown Island is not there anymore and the novice boat owner that doesn't know the channel and know exactly where to go or at nighttime will experience a whole lot of problems with tearing up his boat and motor and lower unit and somebody's going to get hurt. I'd really like to see somebody look into why they removed those markers out in Powhatan Creek. Uh, Mr. Waltrip, if I may ask a follow-up question. Do you think it was uh, VMRC or the Coast Guard that moved those markers not, or if it was I vandalism? not the slightest idea. I know okay. that okay. one of the markers have been changed to mark Shoal, I think it is, Dangerous Shoal. Uh, the green and red markers have been taken out, telling you which side to go on the, to go out. There's no markers there right now, and, and I have seen boats go across there that somebody is going to get hurt. And can I interject as a nine-year Coast Guard veteran? I don't believe that those are maintained by the Coast Guard because I don't believe that channel is, is maintained by the federal government. That would probably be DEQ, Part 2. Okay. 
Um, and it, they may very well be owned by Jamestown Foundation. I, I will look into I, it. I just don't want to see somebody get hurt because I've seen two boats go across it and tear their lower units up and, and spray the jet skis that go across it. They can't see it a few inches under the water. Somebody's going to get hurt. I know exactly the area you're talking about. Ms. I Walker. do too. I've read the ground there, <laughs> even with the markers. <laughs> I just like to see something happen to correct that situation. Yes, sir. Okay. From a safety standpoint. All right. Any other matters of special privilege? Um, Mr. Wilson, will you just state for the record about our uh, mention our, our work session, the date and time? We are planning on having a work session April. 11th at 3.30 uh, in the Building D conference room um, at this point in time. That conference room has not yet been uh, fully secured for the meeting, but um, as of this time, that's where it will be okay. held. If it changes, and that is, that I will is let a change from the last in that public announcement. It so is. it's been changed, and this uh, work session is open to the public if the public wishes to uh, attend. Uh, you say building B. B. You'll be sending out an email as you approach, and you'll be posting it on the county website, also, right? Yes, yeah, so it will be. It will be posted, um, and email will go out to the board. Okay. Uh, um, since this that will be a um, a meeting of the board, we. Um, Instead of having a motion to adjourn, we need a motion to continue the meeting to April 11th at 3.30 for a work session. Can someone make that motion? So moved. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the motion carries. Yeah, I'm not going to be at the wetlands meeting. 